why the price really ain't the price at a car dealership. What? And why the heck can't you, the consumer, just buy a dang car for the advertised price? And why not at even a slightly less cost than the advertised price? If there's one thing that really frustrates every car buyer, it's all the mysterious games dealers play with car prices. Dealers frequently publish one price only to charge a very inflated end price when the actual negotiations get underway. Yes, this is illegal, but they do it anyway. If you're like every other car buyer out there, this kind of BS really pisses you off. We put this show together for you after we talked to our car coaches working in our hassle-free car buying service. We got their feedback on all the nonsense dealers try to pull with them with pricing. And I guarantee you if dealers attempt this stuff with our very experienced car coaches, dealers are 100% going to try these stunts with a lesser skilled buyer like you. Today we are going over a dozen actual examples taken from our car coaches while negotiating for our viewers. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy. And here to help me present these confusing and frustrating real-life dealer pricing games is the amazing Elizabeth. Thanks, Kevin. Today we're going to cover the top 12 most common pricing games that dealers can play. This is all stuff that has happened directly to our car coaches as they are hunting down the right deal for our viewers. Let's start with a very stupid tactic. At number one, a partial down payment is not included in the posted price. Unreal. <laughs> Check out this posted price for a 2021 Infiniti Q50. Just 34,000 miles, and yet it's advertised at an attractive 24,411. That's the advertised price. But what's the real price? The fine print reads, does not include 1695 for a low jack system, any additional pre-equipped products, and or costs incurred to the total vehicle. Please note that the internet special pricing reflects a partial down payment of $3,199 or the trade equivalent. <laughs> internet special pricing, huh? Yeah. The actual price is 29305 almost 4900 bucks higher. Ironically, I noticed the dealer posting this is called Five Star Auto Sales. Not much of a five star dealer, if you ask me. So even their name is designed to mislead you. Number two is the dealership finance price. This stunt happens when the advertised price is contingent on you financing with the dealership's bankers. If you plan to buy with cash or use your own bank or credit union, then the price is suddenly one to two thousand higher. The cash price is not disclosed until you are moving into the finance office or are in the middle of writing up the purchase agreement. Number three, payment-focused pricing tactic. Instead of talking to you about the car's actual price, this dealer tactic steers you toward the monthly payment. The dealer wants to avoid an actual price discussion because they know that by extending the loan term, even though it increases the interest rate, they can make a higher price seem more affordable. This tactic always results in a much higher overall cost. Very common trick. Mm -hmm. And at number four, at distributor or at port installed add-ons. Yep. This is super popular for five brands. I'll mention who shortly. The price does not include distributor or at port installed add-ons. If you followed us for some time now and you're up to speed on illegal tying the sale, this is a tactic some manufacturers use to get the dealer off the hook for pulling something illegal. Dealers often tell you that they don't like pushing these add-ons and say they are forced or have no choice to accept them since they are already installed before the car arrived at the dealership and they say they can't take them off. However, the add-ons that are usually worth as little as two to five hundred bucks are commonly marked up to a thousand or even twenty five hundred dollars. Right. Again, these add-ons are not included in the advertised prices and usually found only in the small print that pre-installed accessories do not reflect or are not included in the advertised price. This is very commonly done by Toyota. It's also happening with Honda, Hyundai, Kia, and Mazda. Typical port installed options include GPS security location, which also requires a monthly subscription, mm -hmm. low jack security, ceramic paint coating, which is garbage, ceramic windshield coating, leather cloth protection, another totally junk product, film paint protection, hood, bumper, and door guards, security wheel lugs, nitrogen air, cosmetic <laughs> wheel repair, overpriced mats, and SUV trunk trays, to yep. name a few. Add-ons have always been common, but generally only on new cars. However, post-pandemic, add-ons have become very normal on used cars, too. You got it. 
Number five, we refer to this next one as the kitchen sink. Usually for high demand vehicles like the new 24 Land Cruiser, there are add-ons on top of add-ons. Even the add-ons have (laughs) add-ons. Yes. For example, the Toyota Land Cruiser has three tiers. The 1958 edition at 55,950, Land Cruiser 61,950, and first edition 74,950. A customer looking for the Land Cruiser with Land Cruiser trim plus convenience package can see 61,950 plus a 4,600 convenience package that's leather, power seats, moonroof, upgraded audio, plus 350 Heritage Blue. The 61,950 jumps to 68,350 total. The majority of Land Cruisers have the upgraded 20-inch alloy wheels installed at the Port Air Distribution Center for $1,240 or Niddle Grappler 18-inch wheel tire combo for $1,549. Nitrogen fill for $95 a tire, cosmetic wheel repair $245, clear paint protection $818, and that's separate from the $245 door <laughs> package. Man, it just keeps going. The dealer out the door offer is seventy five thousand three hundred plus a two week wait can even be up to a three to six month wait. Wow. Wowzer. Number six, extended warranties and gap insurance. Dealer finance offices often just assume you're going to add extended warranties, gap insurance, or other protection plans to the contract. And they do this without your explicit consent or full understanding, significantly raising the final cost. You'll have to say no a lot, and you'll hear dozens of made up stories. To try to scare you into buying these products. The truth is that they don't know anybody who has ever been saved by their products. All of those stories are BS. When all these products are combined, the average car can increase in cost by 2,000 to as much as six grand or even more, depending on the number and type of additional products they get you to agree to. Some buyers report to us that they saw their cost increases exceeding $7,000 or more when more expensive or numerous add-ons got tacked on. Our viewers get this. For example, Jim Wright says, if you have to pay six grand for add-on coverage products that cost the dealer 500 to 1,000 bucks, then it's safe to say the dealer wants five grand to 5,500 more, and you'll pay five grand to 5,500 more for the car than the advertised price, taking a $30,000 price to 35 grand plus. A, do you walk? Or B, do you realize the dealer at 32500 advertised with no add-ons is not overpriced and is the lowest you can spend to buy? Right. Great point, Jim. But this is a difficult question to answer because it is not known until later that the other dealer doesn't have forced add-ons. Yep. Sorry this nonsense is so confusing, but thanks for the question, Jim. Number seven, lease monthly payment grid. We don't often talk about leases, but our car coaches negotiate a lot of them for us. This lease monthly payment grid tactic happens when the dealership provides the customer monthly payments for 10,000, 12,000, 15,000 miles per year in a lease term of 24 or 36 months. Most people don't negotiate a price, but instead will just pay the monthly payments on the grid without even thinking of any negotiation of the price, thinking everything is just a monthly payment on a lease. The dealership then focuses on the down payment to help lower the monthly payments. Mm -hmm. However, it's typically not advisable to put any down payment on a lease. In any event that the car is in an accident and an insurance loss, the entire down payment goes poof like a puff of smoke. (laughs) If you have a smart customer who tries to negotiate the price first, then move into the monthly terms, that's good. However, the dealer will go around them by using the money factor and the residual value of the vehicle at the end of the lease that will screw over the customer. There's also the multiple security deposit that can go up to $10,000 on top of the down payment. Speaking of add-ons, even lessees get hammered by add-ons. Our viewer Beach writes, I got charged for VIN etching, the car alarm, and fabric paint protection. The finance person at Keys Honda said these add-ons were on all the vehicles and couldn't be removed. So... 3600 was added onto my two-year lease. I should have read the paperwork better or just walked out of the dealership. Why are they allowed to do this on a lease? I'm not buying the car. I am leasing it. These fees should be less or non-existent for a lease, right? Number eight, this tactic is known as ghost lowball listing. <laughs> These are vehicles listed that aren't even available, sold, or never was for sale. Sure. They are designed to generate leads for bait and switch and collecting customer information for marketing and remarketing. Listings look legitimate, but the price is often too good to be true or smartly priced very competitively, generally in the KBB great or good price range. This practice is part of the reason for many of the other issues discussed. Yep. Dealers have to compete for clicks online, hence they follow this lowball ghost listing tactic. 
Then many dealers join in since someone else isn't playing fair and they got to do it too. Yeah. And it just becomes a vicious cycle. Even for dealers that put up completely legitimate postings, they sprinkle in some of these ghost listings to catch more traffic. Some of the ghost listings are also due to dealers posting vehicles that are already sold and not taking them down. They already paid for 30 days of advertising and they sold the original vehicle on the eighth day of the month. They just leave the original posting up to get calls coming in. Wow. Number nine, the CPO certification fee. There are dealerships that highlight a vehicle as a CPO or gold certified or platinum certified, etc. It's all the same thing. Just a used car with an extended warranty package. That's it. They claim the CPO gives extras, such as extended warranty, emergency roadside assistance, free car washes, basic maintenance, loaner cars, etc. There are dealerships like Acura and Kia where the advertised price doesn't include the CPO certification. Sometimes they call it reconditioning for certification. This is generally not disclosed on the advertisement and only comes up when the purchase agreement is being put together. These fees can range from 1000 to 2800 It's an unpleasant surprise to get at the end. Very unpleasant. Yep. Number 10 is the sunshine fee <laughs> in Florida. Dealer documentation fees are very unfair to consumers. It's common to find a dealer doc fee, which isn't part of tax title license fees. They range from 800 to 1800 A BMW dealer in Florida can easily charge 1200 in dealer dock fees, whereas a BMW dealer in Manhattan, New York, has a dock fee at 275 since there's a cap regulated by the state. Number 11, reconditioning fee. This fee is pure nonsense. The big reason there's a huge difference between dealer clean retail price and the sale of private party sellers is that the dealer has to recondition the vehicle and a private party seller does not have to. On the East Coast, we have found dealerships that try adding $700 to $2,500 for reconditioning fees. This is ridiculous, what? but common. For example, on a 2019 Honda Odyssey, the out the door included a $1,600 reconditioning fee. This included brake work, wheel alignment, oil change, PDR dent removal, insulation of new used tires, haha, <laughs> detailing, and a couple of additional items to make the vehicle ready for sale. Number 12, the trade in low balling. Dealers may offer an attractive advertised price that is real, but usually resort to undervaluing a customer's trade-in vehicle to make up the difference. Ooh. If you don't have a trade, the price automatically goes up. This is just a tactic to get back some of the money they are giving up on the lower price car. And you are likely to say, well, I'm getting a good deal on their car, so I may as well let mine go for this lower number. Ouch. There you have it, friends. Seriously, there are so many price games that dealers can play. There's no way we could cover all of them today, but we'll give a stab at covering more in a future show. Bottom line is, you're almost guaranteed to run into at least one of these or even more attempts to jack up the price that you thought you were going to pay. As our viewer Samuel Goodwin points out here, he writes, Kia of National City in San Diego, California, literally did everything you stated. My favorite part is that they stated that they could not itemize the contract due to the contract drafting system. Mm -hmm. Contract drafting system? What are they going to think of next? Yeah. Here's another recent comment made by a viewer going by Doc Holliday. Like the name. <laughs> he writes, 9 a.m., walk into Nissan of Mission Hills, California for the Memorial Weekend Sale. I wanted the cheapest car on the lot, base Nissan Versa, with a price tag of $16,999 from the factory. But the dealership had their asking price right next to it for $22,999. Plus, Notice he calls it a stealership. A ste oh, I saw a stealership. <laughs> Plus those infamous add-ons and ghost fees that total over $40,999. For their cheapest car, across from these rats is Hammer Toyota doing the same thing, competing with each other to be the biggest rats of all. Rats indeed. Mm -hmm. I'd like to take this opportunity to point out that by now, many of you know our car coaching staff is expanding to help even more viewers with our hassle-free car buying service. One of the benefits of using our car coach is that you can skip all of these tactics we discussed today. We continue to come out on top in negotiations with dealers on behalf of our viewers beating these fake pricing tactics out of the car deal. Our hassle-free car buying service is one of the best things we've done for our viewers by a long shot, and it guarantees you'll get around all of these price games car dealers play. Our hassle-free car buying service also happens to be the best thing anyone has done for car buyers. There is nobody who plays at the level of the homework guy. 
So true, Kevin. That includes competitors like Car Edge and the Costco Auto Program, which are basically two peas in the same pod. Both have either the immediate process of just turning you over to a dealer or an upcoming intention of turning you over to what they call a dealer referral network, something we know falls flat on its face and disappoints buyers time and time again. Totally a failed system. Dealers are renegades. They will never follow a prescribed program no matter how hard someone works at it and no matter how well they performed on the last deal you brought them. You can literally get good treatment from a dealer one week and go back to the same dealer to buy another car a week later only to be very disappointed the second time around. As one dealer said to me, we're basically a bunch of assholes who just do our own thing. Oh, God. Those are the words of an actual dealer, not mine, but... Nothing could be more true. Yeah. Our hassle-free car buying service offers direct coaching, direct negotiations, and nearly triple the savings compared to any other competing services out there. We don't mess around. Our service is also a lot faster. If people want to go slower, that's fine. But we have put people into a new car just 48 hours after they contacted us for help. We can go that fast if needed. If you're hearing about this car buying service for the first time, Visit our website, thehomeworkguy.com, and read all about it in our detailed posting on what it costs and how it all works. The bottom line is, if you're feeling intimidated, friends, by all the pricing nonsense that dealers pull, or you just don't have the time or energy to fight with those car dealers out there on your own, let us know. We're here to step in and help you, and we've expanded our services to help even more car buyers. By the way, you should also know that our service is the only car buying service that saves you the hassle of negotiating with a finance officer. We have the knowledge firsthand from our newest hire who happened to work directly for our competitors recently. I think you know who. He was one of their managers but came over to join the good guys team. When we met, he said it was the first time he actually had a chance to directly meet the people he'd be working for. He also thought it was incredible that only with the homework guy team do you, the viewers, get a chance to talk directly with the show host. Either me or Kevin will personally take every intake call. We don't have layers of bureaucracy between us and our viewers, and we like it that way. You get to talk directly to us, and you always will. Thanks to all of you out there in our audience for coming back. We greatly appreciate your loyalty. And if you want our direct help in your car deal, text Liz today at 701-441-3399. To all of our longtime subscribers out there, you guys rock. God bless you all. I'm Kevin Hunter, the homework guy, home of the only totally hassle-free car buying service, signing off on behalf of the amazing Elizabeth and the entire homework guy team. Thanks for listening.